Hello and welcome to the Artificers Guild. I'm Simon. Today I will be talking to you about the lore and world building of Dota 2 and how it relates to Artifact. I will also explain why the game we are all looking forward to is so important to the world Valve has built going forward. Let me start like this. It is actually really impressive how much lore and character Valve were able to inject into a tense, competitive multiplayer game, where you are more likely to dish out and endure trash talk than listen to the quips between the heroes. The game features more than a hundred playable characters, and they do not only have a backstory, but specific allies and rivals among the rest of the roster. These heroes are not isolated characters on a battlefield without context, standing on their own against the rest. They know one another, and they have different kinds of relationships to each other, ranging from friendships and mutual respect, or even admiration, to sibling rivalry and deep-seated hatred. This is where the law of Dota 2 is the strongest. It is character-focused. Almost everything about the way the world has been explained thus far has been tied to characters to flesh them out further, but the world surrounding them, not so much. And you can't even blame Valve's writers for that. Dota 2 is a multiplayer game by design. In a game which does not feature any single-player campaigns, where characters always fight alongside or against each other, the most practical ways of conveying any sort of narrative have been context-sensitive voice lines. Thousands of them. Beyond that, there's only flavor text and a few holiday events. Other attempts like the Arch Chronicles, which contained artwork, poetry, and other bits have been removed from the game. Why, Valve? <clears throat> but I understand. There's only so much you can do in Dota 2's genre, unless you introduce alternative modes like Siltbreaker. But it was designed to be more of a challenge mode than actual storytelling. I did enjoy the Gastromancer's diary, though. And it actually has a connection to Artifact, the first of its kind within Dota 2. It's the symbol in an empty, dark room. Hmm, must be metaphor. Anyways, building content like this takes a long time, and it's expensive too. And they still had to build an entirely different mode in an entirely different genre to tell the story. Because Dota 2, on its own the way it is, just isn't able to tell a story. Not while you play it anyway. In a competitive setting, when the player's focus lies elsewhere, your options for crafting a rich world are very limited. And that is why the further we get away from these characters in the world of Dota 2, the more questions about this world remain unanswered. And there is a lot of questions because this is a complicated universe, different planes of existence and realms, several levels of hells, and even paradoxal timelines. It all seems so convoluted when you can't fill the gaps. But there is tremendous potential in between. Unfortunately, it seems the devs have reached the limits of what kinds of stories can be told within the confines of Dota 2's gameplay loop. They saw opportunities to expand the lore and flesh out this world they created, but they needed a new medium to craft new stories and a fresh canvas to paint new landscapes upon. And that is Artifact. When Artifact was announced, some did not see why the Dota IP was being built upon in this way. But now that the devs have revealed a couple details about the story of Artifact's base set, we can see how the writers of these two games have been building up to Artifact's release over the course of the last year within the lore of Dota 2. Something interesting 
has been happening to a couple heroes lately. Their personal story arcs are being progressed, and there are lasting changes in the world around them. You see, most heroes have been entirely stagnant since their introduction to the game. The only real exception to this is when Skeleton King transformed himself into Wraith King, which avoided censorship in China and potential problems with Blizzard. I miss my bones. But more recently, Yonero the Juggernaut has transformed into an entirely different character through the Bladeform Legacy Arcana item. Not in terms of gameplay, but narrative. The Yonero we knew is effectively dead. Yonero is gone. Only the Juggernaut remains. Apparently Sven split his mask, which made ancestral spirits take over the Juggernaut's body. Sven, thank you for using the Adjudicator's Blade to awaken us. This new Juggernaut is also one of the few characters to mention Sola Khan, who plays a pivotal role in Artifact, as well as Kana, whom we have only seen a single piece of concept art for. We don't even know what her deal is. Only that the new Juggernaut seems worried about her. Azra, you haven't heard any rumors of Kana's return, have you? Have you? The most recent Arcana item, the Chains of Obsession, also changed Pudge, but not too much. Though, there is a problem he may need to take care of. So, Lauren, uh, does the finger ever try to take control and you only barely manage to keep it from consuming your entire life force? Ask him for a friend. Even Pudge's home. The fields of endless carnage have been cleaned up. And that is exemplary of the point I'm trying to make. The wheel of time in Dota 2's world has begun to move again, which is huge after years of stagnation. The most recent hero editions have accelerated that process. Maresca the Dark Willow and Dawn to the Pangolier have added a lot of new places and characters to the conversation. They were also the first to mention Rix, another character to be truly introduced in Artifact. Which brings me to the meat of the video. Finally, let's actually talk about what we know of Artifact's story. The lead developer of the game, Jeep Barnett, has revealed that Artifact's base set will tell the story of the Vool Rebellion, which was also teased in Dota 2. It will be a three-way conflict between the Bronze Legion, led by Dresden, the Red Mist Horde, led by Saul Khan, and the Vool Rebellion, led by Rix. Already, this is a story that could not be told using Dota 2's usual gameplay, which only depicts the war between the two ancients. The conflict will be centered around a Vool city and the surrounding forest, where the Bronze Legion intends to make a stand against the Red Mist Horde. The Vools are cooperative at first, but as the occupational grip of the Legion grows tighter around the city, Rix decides that he's had enough, and he starts the Vool Rebellion. <laughs> and this is where I will attempt to connect the dots between what we know of Artifact and what's been teased in Dota 2. So, take the following with just a grain of salt, but to be honest, I find most of this to be fairly clear. Both Pangolia and Dark Willow keep mentioning a place called Roseleaf. Many lore fans, including Sir Action Slacks, of course, have speculated that this place was at the center of a conflict between the Bronze Legion and the Red Mist Horde, which all goes back to this voice line. I found this in what was left of Roseleaf. The Bronze Legion thought they were going to fend off the Red Mist Horde. They weren't ready for what awaited them. This voice line is currently hidden within the files of Dota 2, and if we put it into the context of other voice lines and what we've heard from Jeep Barnett about the story of Artifact, I believe that Roseleaf is the city of Vools that the conflict and artifact is focused on. You ripped what you sowed in Roseleaf, Dresden. You will get no sympathy from me. 
Duck Willow speaks to Bloodseeker about it as well. Oh, I saw you years ago in Roseleaf. Kept my distance though, you know, so I wouldn't get murdered. She also talks to Darkseer. What did you make of the Vool Rebellion? And finally, she commends Treant Protector. I admire what you did in Roseleaf. I mean, it was stupid, but admirable. This is why some people speculated that Roseleaf would be the home of tree people. But I believe that the city belongs to the Vools. But the forest around it may be the home of Treants. If you've been following our content, you'll remember that in April, more than a hundred cards have leaked through the copyright catalog, and even more have leaked recently. All three of the aforementioned heroes which took part in the Battle of Roseleaf, Darkseer, Bloodseeker, and Treant Protector, can be found among the names of leaked cards, more or less confirming their presence in Artifact, and further supporting the theory that Roseleaf is the Vool City. Well, I should say it used to be a theory, because the most recent cards that were added into the copyright catalogue only last month confirm Roseleaf's inclusion in Artifact. There are Roseleaf Druids, which will be creeps, and even the walls of Roseleaf, which I predict will be a board improvement. But now let's talk about something which I haven't seen much discussion about. One of the most interesting things about the story of Artifact that Jeep Barnett has mentioned is that there seems to be a framing narrative as well. Artifact is not only a different medium to tell stories with, but the cards themselves exist within the shared universe of the two games. In this framing narrative, the cards were mysteriously created by someone. I have checked every piece of information we have about Artifact to find a lead, hoping to discover more clues that point towards this mysterious character. And I think I have found it. This is one of the promotional artworks that were released months ago when Valve talked about Artifact for the first time since the International. Here we can clearly see Artifact cards existing within the fantasy world of Dota 2, and more importantly, they point to this character, basically flying out of his pocket. It is clearly not a known hero, and the silhouette does not point to any secondary character. But anyone who is familiar with the lore will find this figure familiar. Lots of pouches, and accompanied by a beast of burden, carrying an unreasonable amount of stuff. The only other character similar to this one is the secret shopkeeper. But the beast depicted here is not Frull, and it is not carrying the secret shop, but what seems to be a whole domicile. They seem to be on their way to a city which is built into the cliff sides. This may not be the shopkeeper we know, but I would guess it is still a keeper, and those are said to be under the protection of the gods. Perhaps it is not just shops they keep, but other kinds of artifacts as well. Of course, the point of creating these cards and their function in-universe is still unknown, but I doubt it will be anything as cheesy as heroes trapped in playing cards. My personal guess would be that the cards are a way of telling the stories of this world for the less literate sort, the kind that is more inclined to gamble than read. That is pure speculation on my part though. The narrative of Artifact will be conveyed in a similar way to Dota 2 via context-sensitive voice lines during regular gameplay. Depending on which heroes face off in a lane, or end up on the same side of the board, different lines of dialogue will occur, revealing part of the story and how relationships ended up the way they did. Not only are there tens of thousands of lines, but the devs also confirmed a lore viewer, where we can read about the involved heroes or listen to them monologuing, 
which I find especially intriguing. I am sure there will be more in there to breathe new life into this world. Perhaps this law viewer will mark the return of the Arch Chronicus. A man can dream. You may ask yourself how this is different from the way that Dota 2 tells a story, and how Artifact will manage to build on things without stagnating itself. After all, card games have their own limitations. The answer is set rotations and expansions. This is why I have specified before that the Vul Rebellion arc is only the story of the base set of Artifact. In the future, there will be expansions which will not only introduce new cards, characters and items, but actually progress the story of existing characters as well. This concept is lifted from Magic the Gathering, and Jeep Burnett has given us some examples as well. Some characters may die, grow older, or change in other ways over the course of upcoming expansions. Coming into the possession of powerful artifacts may alter them permanently, like the Arcana items did for Heroes in Dota 2. Not only that, but it was already confirmed that the first expansion will deal with the aftermath of the conflict. A new narrative will emerge that involves different heroes at a different place, as well as some returning favorites who have changed through their experiences in the Battle of Roseleaf. As a card game, Artifact is uniquely positioned to make the world of Dota progress faster than ever before and fill those gaps in its mythos. Speaking of which, if you guys are interested, I would love to share some of my favorite stories from the lore of Dota with you. I'll also recommend Sir Action Slex's Lorgasm, but watch out for those headcanons. In any case, thank you for watching, and let us know what you think of this kind of content. Do not forget to follow us on Twitter, at Artificer underscore Guild, for all the latest news around the channel and artifact itself. Also, you can like and subscribe to help our channel grow and the community we are trying to build. I have been Simon of the Artificers Guild, and we will see you soon.